Hallelujah. Some years ago, they wanted to start, uh, somebody wanted to start a new television channel or news channel. Um, so what they did was, they created their own news. Apparently, some man died and they were having a funeral. And this man showed up, the dead man, from a plane. But this is what's happening today. And it was big news, yeah, because people want to watch what is sensational. A dead man showing up in his own funeral is sensational. Do you understand that? So, the owners or someone must have thought, okay, let this uh, channel start with a bang. Definitely, definitely start with the bang, even if the bang is a lie. So we want to go after what is sensational. And then I was watching um, a YouTube program, which uh, was interviewing a guitar player. And this guy is maybe older than I am. So he was playing guitar when there was no internet like in the 70s and 80s and 90s. So he was saying, back in those days, when you played for someone or you had an audience, they were appreciative of what you did. But it's not like that today in YouTube or YouTube land as they call it, where if you have a keyboard and a computer, you can type any nonsense to anybody. Do you understand it? So he was saying it took him 10 years to learn a particular passage only to be criticized by someone with a keyboard who doesn't appreciate or value this. But people who know this know the value of what he played. To the untrained ear, it sounds like gibberish. Do you understand? But to an end, if you know the guitar properly, you know what he's played is not easy. How he played it. They want us to know only a master musician who has a ear, who has a motor skills, who has a mastery of the equipment can do it. The Lord was telling me about this happening even with the gospel. Everybody has an opinion. We live in a world that is basically has an overload of information. Do you understand? In 2 Timothy 4, says, of 3 to 5, you, you can listen to me, and I will go into these scriptures later. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. So according to their own desires. That's a fallen desire, fallen world's desire. It's a fallen nature to exalt oneself. And according to that, you, because of reaching here, they will keep up what? Teachers. And the internet is full of those teachers. And that is why God has placed you in a church by His wisdom. For there is no information of the Lord. And this is what I want to talk about today. Go to Daniel 12.4 But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Yes, it says that in your Bible? Yes. Knowledge shall increase. We understood people have itching ears. Yes? Some months ago, if you remember, I had uploaded a video of a discussion. It was on baptism, I believe. This discussion was supposed to be a dis discussion, but it uh, had a life of its own and it turned into a debate to understand. What was the point behind that? It was not to discuss the topic at hand, which was baptism, but it was to highlight one point. 
That is that anything these days can be argued to no end. Do you understand? As I say, so the cows come home, you can argue about everything. You can pick what you want and you can find information on it in the internet and you can download that information and you can debate on that. Whether you believe it or not, you doesn't matter what what has gone behind that, how much research has been there behind that information. It's yours and you present it as if it is yours. This is the point I want to make. People even misunderstanding this debate came up with their own theories of under, of who was debating what and how it is heretical and what not. Do you understand? And they had their own points. I said, okay. Do you understand? Everybody will have their own points. Do you understand? But where is your heart? Is it right with God? When Jesus comes, he said, what? Will there be faith? Not knowledge. Will there be faith? Do you understand? So anything can can be argued these days. Do you understand? So a Muslim long time ago, uh, she was asking me, show me where the Trinity is in the Bible. I said, I don't know. You show me. You tell me where. No, I didn't hear from her. Do you understand? If you want arguments, left, right and center, you cannot have arguments. But it says, give reason for your hope. Yes, hope that is in you. That is talking about bearing fruit. I've spoken about this before. But what I want to say is that information on the internet can be used to support your beliefs. Whatever you believe. Information in the Bible can be used to support your heart. You can turn a scripture around to support what is in your heart. But information in the Bible is meant to support God's heart. When Jesus was tempted, the devil did the, uh, the former. Yeah, He used the information in the Bible to say, okay, jump and he quoted Psalm 91. But, the devil, but Jesus knew God's heart. He shall not tempt the Lord. Do you understand? This is what is needed today. If you go to Luke 20, it says, Then he looked at them and said, What is it then that is written? The stone which the builders have rejected has become the chief kind of stone. In verse 18 it says, Whoever falls on that stone will be broken, but whom, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to power. It's talking about two actions. One is you falling into the stone. What will happen to you? You will be broken. But if the stone falls on you, you will be what? Ground, grind to powder. Grounded to a powder. See, you decide what do you want out of your life. Do you understand? I rather be broken. That's why, even though I like you take rapture, I was pre tribulational initially because that's what I was taught. But as I read the word, I found out that these things are not so according to the word. Do you understand? So you should give priority to study the Bible. Did not the Lord give you the Bible? Yes, in the Bible there are prophecies. He took the time to write down what you should know. Therefore you should know it, yes? But the Lord is not secret friendly in that he does not compromise on the word or the message. You'll speak the truth as it is. Whether you like it or not, it's up to you to understand. Yes? So, what I have done in certain cases I have distilled the word without diluting it. Do you understand? And I have left it to you to ask me questions pertaining to your life. If you ask me about the sand in Jerusalem, what has it got to do with your life? 
to understand. It's good to know where the sand comes from, but it is help you bear fruit, does it? Do you understand? And you will know the disciples by their fruit, yes? So, all this is to prepare you for the day of the Lord or the day that you will meet him. You should not be like Balaam, who has his own plan and agenda, yeah, to serve the mammon or whatever. Do you understand? But you should be like Noah and you should be like Lot, who ran away because there was a way provided for them. You should not be like Lot's wife who looked back. Do you understand? Come out of Sodom. Probably. Do you understand? And this is the reason God has placed you in the church with the pastor. Be obedient to that. Be submissive to that. And if the pastor is wrong, go to God with it. Don't go to the internet. Because the internet will only serve your heart and where it's going. I'm talking personally from my own example. Do you understand? I went to God when I felt that I was wronged. Do you understand? I didn't even speak against my pastor, not even to a single soul. Do you understand? I didn't even show that countenance towards him. In fact, I did the exact opposite. What is God? Mm -hmm. Do he's a God of love. Do you understand? And God delivered me. So does that mean my pastor is bad? No. Do you understand? No. Do you understand? Yes. There is no information or lower with in the church. God gives you what you need. Yes? So before I go on, I have divided what I'm teaching into three areas. One is God's plan and I've written a book about it. That's Kingdom of God. Remember I spoke about diluting? No, distilling without diluting. Yes? This is a distal version of what God has planned. Do you understand? It contains the past, some of the present, and some of the future. But that gives you an idea of what God's plan is. What God has planned. Why this was important is because when I looked at the traditional church and the church view, whether it be Catholic or Pentecostal, it's not what the Bible says. To the point where people who have had the word, maybe in the last generation or the generation before, now I find are very proud. So we've had this word before. If you don't bear fruit, then what good is it? Whether you have the word stopped up in a stockpile, yeah? Do you understand? So that's God's plan. In Matthew 28, verse 18 onwards, Jesus said to teach whom the disciples what he has commanded us. Do you understand? And that's the second part. That's a covenant God or Christ has with us. Do you understand? So to once you are his disciple, to teach the, what he has covenanted us with, what he has commanded us. That is the second part, yes? So, that is set in concrete. In other words, you can't change that. Because does it doesn't say, according to interpretation, teach, no. Teach what is, what he is commanded, yeah? That's the word of God, that's why it's written. Do you understand? So, so it's based on understanding the first thing, which is God's plan. In other words, if you don't understand the plan of God, you can err. 
Do you understand? If you don't understand the Trinity, for example, that God is Trinitarian, Jesus' plan on the restoration and on the new covenant, there will be, you can err on that because you don't understand God's plan and who God is. Am, am I clear on what I said? Yes? Yes? And so, as a human being, I can make a mistake here and there. And that's why, to avoid that, you go to a Bible school sometimes. To understand. But all today's Bible schools do is teach you their doctrine. So you develop a denominational slant. You don't go by with the Word of God. Am I clear on what, I, what yes. I'm saying? Yes? yes? So you must understand God's plan based on the Word of God. Do you understand? Like for example, when you baptize someone, you're baptizing them into what? A Gentile into who God is. That is John 17, 3. So Trinity comes into effect. Not just Jesus is alone. Do you, do you understand? Yes. yes? So you must understand what who God is and what it actually means. Yeah? Do you, do you understand? You can argue about everything like I said. But are you bearing fruit? Is there hope in you? That's the second part here. Yeah? The third part I call Earth's sojourn or the journey of the earth. Yeah? So Jesus is soon coming king. Yes? So it's based again on understanding God's plan, on what he's planning to do in the future. So the study of end times or eschatology in this not all interpretations may be absolutely correct. Do you understand? You can formulate the best that you can on the Word of God. On you know, or on what you know. But again, don't put God in the box. The more of the Word of God that you know, do you understand? The more you understand. For example, in 2 Thessalonians 3, it speaks about the restra restrainer, yes? Yes? You, the Antichrist will be revealed after the restrainer it go it goes on. Now, before, when I used to believe in pre-tribulational rapture, I believed the restrainer was the Holy Spirit. I didn't know any scriptures. So when I started studying scriptures and more, I believed that it was Michael the angel. When I studied this more, what I believed about Michael the angel is from scripture, but I am not a Jew, am I? Then, for example, it, I understood there is a night and a day, and Jesus gives us hints about it, and he talks about it. How did the Holy Spirit come on the day of Pentecost? Were not the disciples already filled? Yes? Do you understand? So like he comes, maybe he leaves. I'm just saying. Do you understand? So I understood that it's more than Michael. As long as we have the exousia power, how can the devil defeat us? I'm not talking about the witnessing power, that what we have. Do you understand? Inside of us. The output part. Do you understand? So that made me switch back again to the Holy Spirit. While Michael may be doing certain things, I believe that the restrainer is the Holy Spirit, but not according to my old belief, if you know what I'm saying. And I explain my beliefs scripturally so that you can Understand the path that I have taken from the Bible. Don't go to the internet for it. Go to God with it. So these are the three things. Yes, the past, the present and the future. Are you clear about this? Why am I doing this? Why is it being done? Your faith must be real. 
then you must be true to what is being said and done. Not just some hype or you don't follow your desire of your heart to make yourself great. A lot of people use Christ's name to make themselves great. Do you understand? That's not good. It will not do any good in the last day. Am I clear on that? Yes? Plus, there are a lot of questions I'm being asked on WhatsApp. And I neither have the energy nor the ability to answer all of them at the moment. Maybe before I did. So I'll answer them on Sunday. Do you understand? These are the things I may have taught on earlier. So tagging all of that would mean... I'll have to go through the whole 10 years of talks and tag each one. It's better to take it one by one. As people ask, I'll answer. Do you understand? So I'm going to answer them through the video because it's easy and others may have the same question. Daniel 2, 31-34. Many of you there, can you read that? Daniel 2, 31-34 You, O king, who are watching, and behold a great image, this great image whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of, of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, and dropped them in pieces. Okay, that's fine. So, there is a difference in the legs. What are the legs made up of? Legs of iron. Legs are made of iron, yes? And its feet is made of what? Of what? Iron and partly of clay. Do you understand? Now, we can go into depth into what that means, but if you look at the original text and all that, the clay is potter's clay. Iron is different, yeah? But here, what I'm talking about is Catholicism, Catholicism and Islam. Where it fits, it's obviously not iron, because iron is singular. Do you understand? So, is the feet, that is the last, empire which the Lord breaks. It can be a conglomeration or mixture of Catholicism, Islam, maybe UN, I don't know what. We don't know exactly for sure, but we know that Catholicism and Islam is going to be united. How so? We don't know. We do not know yet. Because I forwarded a picture of the Pope kissing the Quran. That now it is acknowledged that Islam is from God. If that is the case, then why are we following Jesus? Do you, do you understand? By the Catholic Church, yeah, I'm, I can, by what I mean, acknowledge. So that's what I meant. Do, do you understand? Now, I'm not saying every Catholic believes that. I believe there is going to be a split between those who actually believe and those who follow second and third hand information in every denomination. Do you, do you want to know whether you be Catholic or Pentecostal or whatever you call yourself? Do you understand? Yes? That is why your faith must be real. Am I clear on this? Yes? So that was the first question. The second question or the topic was on climate change. How should we as Christians react or, you know, um, go uh, bear fruit in this? So I said scripturally. They do not know how to react. Yes. Yeah. I said, what? Well, what does the Bible say about it? Yes? So, first of all, when I'm asked about this, I check my life. 
What does Revelation 21 1 say? Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Okay, so everything that you see will what? Pass away. Pass away. Because there is a new heaven and a new earth. Yes? yes? So that is eventually going to happen whether we like it or not. Yes? So are we the savior of the earth? Are we the savior of the earth? No. no. Jesus is the savior. This is where I stand. But when you go to Proverbs 12.10, can you read that, Anna? The righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Yes. A righteous man regards the life of his what? Animal. Yes. What is it say in Matthew 12.11? Sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out. Yes, so the, this is Jesus talking, saying, if you have one sheep and it falls on, on a, uh, onto a pit, will you not lift it out? Yes? Yes. So, the Lord expects us to take care of His creation, whether it be animal or tree or the earth. Because who created us? God. So who do we serve? The Creator God. Yes? yes. But know that eventually everything He will renew. Do you understand? He will pass away and He will renew. But when you are on earth, you are supposed to be a good steward of everything God has given. This is how I look at it. Now, because of this, of being a good steward, do I believe in all the hype that I hear? Like, for example, global warming. Now, I have been given certain amount of intelligence, enough to look it up myself. So I looked up global warming from a biblical perspective. So they say, for example, a coal factory in England is causing X amount of trouble. Fine. Yeah, I, I have not been to that coal factory. I do not know. Maybe they have done their research on this. But then, how will that coal factory in England affect polar ice caps in Mars? They are also melting. So then, is it solar warming because of that one factory or many factories like that? Do you understand what I mean, yeah? What is the ice age? What is global warming? What is that? You must know it biblically, yes? Do you understand? I can give you a NASA website, if you ask me, about these uh, polar ice cap melting in Mars. Believe me, it's not because of a fact in England, yeah? Do, do you understand, yeah? So, how many of you have heard of plate tectonics? So you've seen how... How many of you have heard of Pangea? Have, have Pangea is how the earth was according to the secular world before it was separated. Do you understand? Now, how, how many of you have you heard of the Ring of Fire? Yes? yes. Where there's volcanoes, earthquakes. Why? Because there is movement in the tectonic plates. In fact, San Andreas Fault is one plate moving one way and the other plate moving the other way. And the energy is built up and it releases itself in an earthquake every 100 years, 110 years. Something like that. Yeah? So, it's the next earthquake is due. Do you understand? Now, you have been to 2020, yeah? So, if you look at pale plate tectonics or the seismic belt, which is, which is the, basically, if you look at all the lines in the map that are underneath the ocean, 
how do you answer that biblically? But you understood what I meant by tectonic plates, yeah? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. It's a plate on which the continents sit. But how can you explain that biblically? You can. You should be able to. Is your faith real? Or do you subscribe to the theory of evolution? Which is only a theory, yes? But it is thought as a fact. In all our schools, yes? They call it a theory of evolution, but it's thought as a fact. We try opposing it. In the Bible, Genesis chapter 6, is there not a flood? Yes. And how did the flood start? From above and from what happened below? Read your Bible. All I will tell you is that Genesis is in the Bible, yes? If you hold it upside down, it's in the last chapter. But if you hold it the right way up, Does it not say the fountains of the deep opened up? I don't have it here yet uh, because I didn't plan to go. So could that, could those be the tectonic plates that we see today? Because when you study them and when you research, remember I told you earlier I used to read a peer review things and scientific journals and all that. These are the things that I research, yeah? Because I don't go by what's said on CNN, for example. I go by what the... So there, the scientists have found a beginning of this and an end of this. Because the, it all began where? In the Middle East, next to Israel, according to the Bible. And one of those lines ended went around the world and ended near, um, if I'm right, uh, on top of Russia. And it's split in different. But the Bible says what? The fountains of the deep opened. Do you understand? So that explains the plate tectonics, yes? Do you understand? Yes. So what am I talking about? What, what am I trying to say? We can't save the earth, can we? Yes, we are not its savior. We serve its creator, and therefore we must be good stewards of this. What is given? Yes. Do you understand? If a chair is broken, do you sit on it? Why? You are a good steward of your body, and you don't want any pain, and other people laughing at you when you fall, yes? like that, take care of the world. That is how I view this climate change business. Do you understand? I go to God and I find out from the Bible and I, and I see what I have to do as a good steward. Is that clear? Yes. yes. What does God say about it? Do you understand? Simple. He created this, therefore he knows how to maintain it. Do you understand? Yes. So is that clear? Yes. yes? Now, yeah, another question was asked on why there was a snake on a pole held up by Moses. Now, can you go to Numbers 21.8? Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it, shall live. Yes. So, now, in this particular verse, the word serpent is italicized. It's yes. put there, yes? Yes. But it chose to highlight something. Yeah? It's, it just says, make a, make a fiery and set it upon a pole. It doesn't make sense to us. Do you understand? But I'll get to that, yes? But we understand that this is a serpent. Why was... 
a serpent used? That was the question. Because the serpent is the sign of the devil, yes? If you go to Genesis 3 1, can you go there, please? Or, or uh, I'll read it. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Yes? So you find the word serpent. Yes? Do you understand? So the word serpent is actually Nahash. The shining one. It's not just a talking serpent. Now, in the garden, there must have been a serpent that communicated with Eve, but it didn't communicate in English. Meaning, when the serpent speak serpentese, whatever language is the serpent, Eve understood it. That could be the case. Do you understand? What does a cow speak? No, that sort of moo speaks. <laughs> When a cow says moo, you don't moo, yeah? You understand what <laughs> what it's saying, yeah? You understand? Every time my room has to be clean, she pretends to be a cow and she says moo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So, it sometimes works. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying, yeah? Now, why... Was the serpent on a pole in the first place? Danny, can you read Numbers 21, 5 to 6? And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up? That's enough, yes. When, because the people spoke against God and against Moses. Moses. That was a sin. That was what was wrong. To remedy that, God himself said, put the serpent up. So what does the serpent symbolize? symbolize? Their sin. Do you understand? That is what Jesus did. Do you understand? In John 12, 32, what does it say? Now, there are a lot of other meanings to this verse, but can you read that meaning? And I, if I am lifted up, from the earth will draw all peoples to myself. Yes. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, yes? Who's saying this? Jesus. Do you understand? He is basically being lifted up on a pole. Do you understand? Yes? Can you read Romans 7, 24 to 25? O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So the body of death, who will save you from that? Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you understand? And if you go to John 17, 3, I'll read that. Um, it says, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Do you understand? That means what? You means the true God. That is the Old Testament. And Jesus Christ is the sent one. That is the New Testament. You should know the Old Testament and the New Testament. And only then can you understand why the snake was on the pole. Jesus took upon himself our sins. Do you understand? He became a substitute. Do you understand? People are still against God. Yes, they are born in sin. But Jesus saves. He takes that sin away. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes? So this is the snake on the pole. The next topic is... is it's not very complicated, but people have asked me about this because they don't understand this. Let's go to Luke 17. Luke 17, I know if you're there. Can you read from 23 to 20, 37? Luke 17, 23 to 37. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. 
For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they brought, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he who is on the house top and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lord's wife, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed, the one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together, the one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field, the one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Yes. So this is for the most part clearly understood. But verse 37, it says, And they answered him and said, to him, where, Lord? What are they asking? So he said to them, as a result of them asking, wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Gathered together. In some translations, instead of eagles, it says vultures. So what does that mean? I've heard of elaborate discussion on how, if it is the vulture where the dead body is the work. But this body, when you go back to studying the original language, is a living body. Because a dead body is a carcass. Yes. Do you understand? But that is mentioned in Matthew 24, 30, 23 through 31. And for Rachel, can you read, Steve? <coughs> Wherever. The eagles. The eagles. Hmm. Continue. 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 Really. Son of man. you read the whole text because I want you to get in in context. It says where in verse 28 it says wherever the carcass carcass means what? It's dead. dead. Yeah. And there is and there the eagles will be gathered together. You said what angels, no? Yes? You're not very 
far from the truth actually now this is taken from job 39 27-30 can you read that does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high on the rock it dwells and resides on the crag of the rock and the stronghold from there it spies out the prey its eyes observe from afar its young ones suck up blood and where the slain are there it is where the slain are there it is you see the thing now i'll explain all of this but up before all of that i want you to read 1 Thessalonians 4 16 to 18 because i want the scripture to explain itself 1 Thessalonians 4 16 to 18 for the lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of god and the dead in christ will rise first uh, who will rise first the dead in christ. so we have the dead Yes, that is the carcass. Yes, yes. Then we who are alive. We who are what? Alive. alive. Ah. So that is, that is the body. Yes. yes. Continue. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Hmm. Therefore, comfort, comfort one, one another. With this yes. So who may? With the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. Yes? That is talking about an angel. So talking about angels. Yes? Let's um, talk about... Um, I mean, let's go to Ezekiel 10.14. Danny, if you're there, can you read that? Ezekiel 10.14. We're talking about cherubim. Which is classed as an angel in English, yes? Cherubim, yes, Ezekiel 10, 14. Each one had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherub. The second one, the second face, the face of a man. The third, the face of a lion. And the fourth, the face of an eagle. Ah, what did the fourth have? The face of an eagle. eagle. Yes, go to Revelation 4, 7. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a cat, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Yes. Again, in Revelation, it's mentioned as an eagle. Yes? So this is cherubim. Now God himself describes himself as an eagle. Go to Exodus 19.4. Exodus 19.4. The question was asked why I don't give my notes because this is skeleton notes. I preach on more on and less depending on how the Lord leads. Do you understand? But these scriptures I can post them. I have no problem. Yeah? But read Exodus 19.4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles wings and brought you to myself. Yes. That this is God speaking. To the children of Israel. So he himself describes himself as what? Eagle. An eagle. So when you understand the context, this is the end time parable. Am I right? You know, we, in Matthew and when you and Luke, yes? yes? Yes. So do not go after false prophets. Yes? The return of Jesus will be made very clear because you know as you know the, the lightning is you won't be mistaken so don't go after false for false prophets and the coming of Jesus will be certain do you understand so like Noah and Lot what did they do they escaped now I'm not talking about Lot's wife yes Noah was shut in by the Lord and God sent his angels to Lot to deliver them. Yes. And they escaped, yes? yes. So, so this is the description of all the things. Remember I said the disciple has to wear. 
So the disciples are asking where the separation of the righteous from the unrighteous will be. And Jesus is answering, the righteous will be taken by rapture. And the unrighteous will stay back and not remain. I mean, not be taken and will remain. Do you understand? So, the eagle represents angels who are rapturing. Yes? yes. Do you understand? Go to Revelation 14. 14 to 16. If you're there, you can read it. Then I looked and behold a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he's... See, so he who sat in the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Yes, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into the other scriptures, but you'll find a second angel also doing the same thing in Revelation 14. But that's not what I'm talking about. If you go to Revelation 6, 11 to 12. Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood. So, this is talking about the timeline, when all this happens. Do you understand? You know where the rapture, because I've taught you on this, there are 13 similarities between Matthew 24 and Revelation 6. You can do that on your own, but I've made a comparison list, yeah? So, a long time ago, yeah? But, do, do you understand? But here, this Revelation 6, 11 to 12, gives you a timeline. But here, what Jesus is saying is, don't look back. Don't value your earthly life. Do you understand? Remember Lot's wife, it says, yeah? Do you remember Peter when he walked on water? What did he look upon when he was going to sink? On Jesus or the? On the waves, yeah? Do you understand? The waves had nothing to do with him walking on water. Do you understand? Yeah? There was a supernatural event. Do you understand? Yeah. So, where so the disciple asked where the separation was going to take place. Do you understand? So, and Jesus was saying where it's going to take place, where the body is, whether you're dead or alive. Do you understand that? Then will act as a separation. Do you understand? So, first of all, there's a lightning that is the coming of the Son of Man. Second, it will be visible throughout the world. You won't miss that, miss that, yes? Because the tribes of the earth will mourn in Matthew and in, and in Luke it says as the lightning flashes from one side, yes? And the body, if you are alive, you will be gathered together. If you are dead, what will happen? The devil will rise first, to understand. And about the rapture, it says two will be sleeping. In the same bed, one will be taken. Do you understand? So, these eagles symbolically are angels, not vultures. Do, do you understand? Yes? So, this is talking about the rapture. There are many things that are there, but because of the lack of time, it's already one hour and basically ten minutes. Yeah? Uh, I'll just cover one more thing and then um, one more topic and then we'll wind up for the day and I'll continue, yeah? You, when you read the passage, 
Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man, yes? Yes. Yes? This was asked, why was Jesus referring to himself as a Son of Man? If you go to the traditional teaching, people explain that it is because Jesus wanted to show his humanity. Yeah, let's look at what the scripture says. Let's go to Matthew 26, 64. Jesus said to him, It is as you said, Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power and coming on, on the clouds of heaven. Yes, so Jesus is referring to himself as the Son of Man, yes? In Mark fourteen sixty-two, Jesus is, is talking to the Sanhedrin, yeah? Mark fourteen sixty-two. Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power mm -hmm. and coming with clouds of heaven. Yes, again, you will see that Jesus is referring to himself as the Son, Son of Man. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 14. Danny, if you're there, can you read it? Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on his hand a golden crown, and his, in his hand a sharp sickle. So, you see a white cloud? Is Jesus, or is, is a person sitting down, or is he on a horse? Yes, sitting. 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 sitting yes. yes. Why? Why did I specify that? Is going to be important later, but I'm not going to teach about it today. Now, Samuel, can you read Daniel seven thirteen? I was watching the night visions, and behold, one like the son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Yes, Daniel 7.13, it says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Yes? Now, can you read John 3.13? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man, who is in heaven. Okay, now, to put in a nutshell, I was taught that this was talking about Jesus' humanity. But this is not. This is talking about Jesus' divinity. In Daniel 7.13, what does it say? Who is, your, who is Jesus referring? Who is, who is Daniel? Who is sitting? Who is the club writer? Son of Man. Who is the Son of Man? God Himself. Do you so Jesus was saying to the Sanhedrin, I am that God. Why? Because all Jews are basically the sons of God, yes? Remember, I will explain this before, yes? You can trace your lineage if you are a Jew all the way back to Adam, yes? But there is a difference between Son of God and a Son of Man. That Son of Man is this divine fellow who comes. Do you understand? That's what Jesus was saying and that's what got him into trouble. Because why else would you know, clothes be torn and what not, yeah? For you, Jesus be crucified, yes? He was crucified because of what? Because he claimed to be God, yes? yes. So this is talking about Jesus' divinity. Am I clear? Yes, but This is why Jesus said, Son of Man. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm right, it's used more than 80 times in Ezekiel to refer to Ezekiel. And even in Daniel, or is there, but not for Daniel, but as we read, yes? Do you understand? But this is why Jesus used that term. Because those people to whom it doesn't matter if you're the Son of God, because they themselves are the sons of God, it makes a difference when you say you are the Son of Man. 
Is that clear? Yes. Please. Yes. yes. No. I could go on because I have a lot of things to teach. But today I taught on Catholicism, Catholicism and Islam. Yes. The climate change. Snake on a pole. And vultures, eagles, or angels. Yeah. And then we spoke about Son of Man. And I'll continue next week. Yes. But I want you to pray that these teachings will bring the right people to organize these teachings so that we are the salt, the light, and the aroma of Christ. Do you understand? This, this has to go forward. Not what is traditionally taught in the church. I, I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but you have to, your faith has to be real. If they're teaching the wrong thing, then it doesn't matter whether you're pagan or not. Do you, do you understand? You must know why you believe what you believe. It must be real. Like I said, God doesn't need defending. But you do. You need to speak to yourself to understand. Be organized in that. And to that end, God told me to teach about three things. Simplify. Remember, I keep mixing and dilute. No, distilling without diluting, yes? So there's past, present, and future. What is the past? The kingdom of God. I've written a book. Present, what is Jesus commanded us? Future, what is going to happen? The end time. So eschatology. Simple, yes? Yeah? And on that, do you understand? Based on the questions people ask, on their calling, I'll answer that the best that I know of. Is it, is it clear? Yes. But biblically. And all this is to avoid information overload. Because if you go to the internet, you'll find tons of topics about nothing. Do you understand? Much ado about nothing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That's a different generation. You won't understand that. But you understand what I'm saying, yeah? Yeah, so ask questions. This is why God has placed you in the church and why God has given us what? Apostles, prophets, prophets evangelists, evangelists, pastors, evangelists, and, teachers. and teachers to edify the saints, to build them up. Do you understand? Don't go to the internet. Google is not your best friend in this. I'm not saying Google is your friend in other areas, but I'm talking about biblical matters, yeah? Do you understand, yeah? So, am I clear on what I said, yes?